Hey, welcome back everybody. So in this episode, we're building another French cleat wall here. In a previous episode, I did the French cleat wall, which is behind the camera right there, which has all the clamps and everything. So decided to add to this wall right here. If you wanna see what we did, how I built all these tool racks and whatnot, and what my idea was for this wall, stick around and we'll get to it. Hey, welcome back everybody. Hey, uh, so those who have been following know a couple videos ago, I did this French cleat wall right here for clamp storage. And I thought I was gonna put a bunch of other stuff on this wall, but I pretty much reserved it for clamp storage. And uh, if you saw the last video, then you know that I had done most of these already. I've added a couple more little racks for different clamps for long bar clamps up there. Uh, for these frame clamps right here, hangers for those and a strap claps, all that stuff. I'm running out of space on this wall, so I'm reserving that room right there for a couple more clamp racks for growth, because uh, we all know you never have enough uh, clamps. Uh, so what I am doing is I decided in this pass-through, since it's a central location between the main floor where all the big equipment's at, and the back room back here where there's eventually gonna be a big workbench in the middle of the floor back here for doing hand tool stuff, assembly, finishing, all that stuff. I wanted somewhere in between, so, I could have tools and stuff, commonly used type stuff, hand power tools, uh, chargers, commonly used fastener screws, nails for nail guns, stuff like that. So I went ahead and decided that on the adjacent wall over here, that we've got another French cleat wall over here. So this one's a little bit less heavy duty than the last one uh, on that side. So I did half inch plywood, on this wall with half inch plywood cleats. Um, so what I imagine is gonna happen with this wall is, since I took all the drywall down off this wall because I wanted to run a little bit more electrical to add two uh, GFCI outlets over here because the water heaters are on, are on the other side of this wall. Also added another uh, 110 outlet on the other side of this wall for the air compressor that's back there. So what's gonna happen with this wall right here, I'm gonna make a bunch of different racks to go on here uh, for different stuff. So there's gonna be a charging station over here for hand tool, uh, hand power tool batteries, and probably some sort of hanger stuff over here somewhere I can set my phone when it's charging when I'm out here in the workshop. Same thing for like a Bluetooth speaker, because I'm always listening to music when I'm out here working and trying to find somewhere to set everything is kind of a nuisance, but a nice spot to have all that stuff when at, actually out here doing stuff is gonna be fine. So I imagine a bunch of different racks for hand power tools, uh, fasteners, little bins, stuff like that. So I'm gonna kind of film this as I go, coming up with different things to put on this wall right here and see what I can do to get it filled up. So let's get to it. First things I'm gonna do is make a charging station for batteries. For the charging station right here, I've got two chargers sitting here that I'm at least gonna make room for these on there uh, for drill and driver. And I might add a second one of these. But I'm going to definitely make it over width because there's probably going to be some other chargers I want to add to it that I have around here. Stuff that I don't use too commonly, but we'll see what happens. So uh, these chargers have an angle of the battery slots. So what I imagine I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of make a, a cleat that hangs on a slight angle with these most likely because this one doesn't have back screw holes to screw it to anything. This one does, but regardless, I'm probably just going to make an angled system to hang on there. Uh, that these will just get zip tied to. Um, and if I figure out some other fastening system later, we'll, we'll do that. So I'm gonna take some measurements and start cutting some pieces and we'll get this made up.
All right, so a couple of the cuts I just made on camera there, a couple I didn't, and I'll explain those here in a moment for this little charging rack that I'm gonna do. So here's a section the length of the cleat that's gonna hang on the wall that I made. So the angle I was cutting a little bit ago will be for, so this, so that this can hang in that cleat and this will be the face where everything's mounted to. The problem is with a cleat like this and this much hanging off the front, you get this, the weight out here with no support under it and it just hanging on this is it's gonna wanna roll forward and then that cleat, you run the risk of it when it come out. So you want all the weight going straight down on it or at least something supporting it. So what I did is I cut a couple little sections right here. This was on a 20 degree angle, this cut right here that I had made that long rip cut on an angle. So what I'm gonna do is this section, I made two 20 degrees over uh, on the saw real quick. On this section right here, this is gonna get actually cut. So what's gonna happen is one of each one of these reverse sections is gonna get cut to the back of that, um, that cleat right there. And then I'll have supports to hold it out away. So I'm gonna do that real quick. So I'm setting the cleat on there right there. So what I can do is I could take this section right here of this, um, and actually I don't even need to do that. What I need to do is because we know this face right here where this cleat's gonna mount to is gonna be the matching one on the wall right there. So we gotta account for that thickness. So the width of these pieces, the two supports I'm making, need to match this angle right here on the face right here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a straight edge real quick. I'm gonna lay it on that angle. And then I'm just gonna, uh, gonna mark these. I want them to go all the way down here. And I know this isn't exact because I gotta account for the thickness of the, the straight edge here, but I'm just making a mark here because then I can use just about the thickness of the saw blade to account for that. So I'm gonna cut these real quick and we're gonna do a setup fit with everything upside down on here on the, a flat surface so we can tell if it lines up and then I can mark them and then we'll know how to, where to glue and nail them. All right, so now you can tell these two line up pretty good once they're in there right there. I'm just gonna make a mark on the underside here where, uh, where they meet the, uh, the wood right there so I can measure. And then we'll go ahead and start getting this assembled and we'll get stuff put on here and see how it turns out. All right, I've marked these two in their respective spots, so I'm gonna go ahead on one of them, add some glue. I'm gonna clamp it real quick and then drive a couple pin nails from the other side. So I got the uh, the front lip that I'm gonna glue and uh, pin nail on here that'll go like that. So when it's actually hanging on the wall, it'll be something like that. Um, but one of the things I just uh, realized I'm, I'm done, uh, I didn't think about it earlier, this because the matching cleat that's gonna be on the wall, I didn't take into account for that thickness for this to rest against it. So what I'll do is I'll just take thickness, same thickness plywood strips from this piece I had cut earlier and I'll just glue and pin them onto the back of these legs for a little section down here near the bottom of them. So you're not gonna see them anyways, they're gonna be hidden against the wall. But like I said, you know, trial and error, see what works, what doesn't work, and that was a goof on my behalf. So let's get this glued and pinned on here real quick. little pin nailers are handy. All right, for the uh, cleat attachment on this uh, charging shelf, station, whatever you wanna call it, I'm actually just gonna glue it on here because it's a little too thin. I only have one inch pin nails, so they go all the way through there. I don't wanna deal with that. Um, so I'm just gonna glue it right here, but what I did is I clapped a, clamped a strip of scrap wood to the, the back right here because I'm clamping on an angle here and it's gonna have a natural tendency for it to wanna squeeze it out and shift stuff. So with it on that angle here, if I clamp right here now, it can't shift backwards. I guess I gotta tighten that clamp right there. Can't shift backwards now when I'm clamping here and I'm just gonna let it set uh, until it sets up here in an hour or two and do that. So I'm gonna glue that real quick.
All right, so the glue uh, dried on that uh, that cleat we put on this uh, little rack shelf charging station that we're doing. So as I mentioned, because I my mess up earlier, I just took that little scrap of half inch ply because that's what this entire thing's made out of and then cut two little rectangles here that I just pin nailed onto the backs here to account for the width of the cleat. So sits on there like that. And now since it's got those feet in there, if you push here, it's not gonna have the tendency for the top to wanna pull out of there. So it's nice and stable, even pulling on the bottom out seems to do just fine. So what I'm gonna do is grab the chargers that I'm gonna mount on here. I'm gonna put them up here, draw little circles where I'm gonna do, uh, drill some holes to put some zip ties. All right, uh, for the one, the pin nailer and the finish nailer battery charger, I'm gonna have to run the strap over this rail up front because there's not a gap below the bottom of the charger there, but the other one for these type of tools, the uh, cobalt ones, has enough, so I'm gonna put two straps over it going through here. Top or uh, bottom holes will be straight through. The top holes, especially for the uh, piece of crap cobalt tools, they're actually not pieces of crap, I've had these for a few years and I beat the crap out of them. Uh, these top holes I'm gonna have to drill at an angle because where they come out the back here, I gotta make sure there's still clearance for that bottom cleat that on the wall for it to hang through so that the hole will have to come out a little lower in this gap back here. Perfect. Of course, these zip ties aren't long enough, so I'm gonna have to kind of double them up. Oh, these cutters are garbage. All right, so that one is not good. All right, so here we have it. Uh, got it set up on here, everything. I was lucky enough that there was enough space left over where I had to add those two little spacer feet so it sat, sat correctly on here, where I was able to route the cords through there under those right there and zip tie the cords right there. I haven't decided if I'm just gonna leave this spot open for another charger over here, or if I'm gonna make another charging rack for other battery chargers that maybe hangs down here. I also thought about maybe putting a little little groove in this right here so I can hang my phone right here uh, with the cord running right here so it actually rested on there and uh, have a charger right there. Plus, you know, I usually have a Bluetooth speaker so I'll figure out where I'm gonna do that if I'll make a hanger for that so it can all sit over here and charge also. But um, that's pretty much it for this thing right here. I'm gonna make a few other smaller examples of stuff. Uh, if I come up with something good, I'm going to add that to this video, but uh, I'll kind of shoot more video as I go, making different holders for different stuff, tools, uh, drills, saws, stuff like that, and racks to hang stuff on here. I also have the, uh, the fence for the router table, which is uh, on the right wing of the saw over there, and um, jigs, jigs for days. So I'm going to make hangers for hanging jigs. So cross cut fence for the table saw, the different jigs I use for CNC projects, um, you name it, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff. Oh, uh, uh, miter gauge for the table saw, the box joint jig, probably saw blade holders, stuff like that. So I'm gonna get to that and I'll shoot some updates on here and hit all the big ticket stuff and then do an overview once everything's done. The next uh, rack that I'm making for the uh, French cleat wall there is gonna be a large four foot wide two row bin system, different cubby holes for uh, putting stuff. So the bottom row is gonna be slightly deeper, top row slightly shallower. Uh, I've got the back that it's gonna hang on cut out and a bunch of the pieces for the actual, uh, the bottoms of them and a front lip. So there'll be about, uh, about a quarter to three eighths of a lip on the front so stuff can't just fall out of them. Uh, so I have a whole bunch of pieces for the already cut stacks of these blocks right here, these 
pieces that are gonna be the dividers for this system. So what I'm gonna do is cut to meet that front lip uh, pretty close to 45, not quite, angle on here to uh, create kind of a angle, bevel, whatever you wanna call them, um, going across there. So that it uh, looks a little bit better, it's easy to, stuff, to grab stuff, get them in and out without having to squeeze your fingers in between stuff. So I got the miter gauge set up right here. Uh, the actual stop set up on here so I can just align all these thicker ones for the, the bigger shelf. And uh, I'm gonna get cutting these real quick and then I'll show you how the assembly's gonna go. So I got all the pieces cut with the exception of the cleat that's gonna go on the back and a spacer for the bottom so it sits uh, correctly on the wall there. Um, everything's mocked up right now, just sitting here. Nothing is attached yet. You see uh, everything just moves around. Uh, what I'm doing is just trying to get an idea here and think about it for a few how I want because I have some extra of the dividers. Uh, how wide I want some of the sections, whether I'm gonna make a few wider and a bunch of smaller ones. Because uh, I imagine I'll be putting like boxes in some of these bins, boxes of screws, uh, nails for the nail guns, for uh, brads, pin nails, all that stuff. Uh, so really, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna walk with you, have a cup of coffee, which is funny because it's like nine something at night right now, uh, and probably grab a few things here, some boxes of screws, some boxes of nails, little containers of stuff and lay them out on here and see before I get to actually clamping, gl gluing, marking everything, gluing, clamping, and pin nailing everything in. Um, so I'm gonna get to that and then we'll get back to this once I figure it out. All right, so after laying out a few boxes of screws and nails and stuff, I've actually decided, so on each level, there's gonna be three small bins that are the width of a couple boxes of the standard size screws, nails, stuff like that on each side with a bigger area in the middle. If I ever decide I wanna divide that up, I can just throw in a new divider in there and then pin it in place. So that's not a big deal. So on the assembly, I have to do the top, uh, top shelf first because to pin in from the bottom, if the bottom shelf was here, I probably wouldn't be able to get the uh, pin nailer in there to nail the bottoms of those for the dividers. So I'm gonna get some glue, get this clamped and start uh, assembling this right here and, and we'll get to it. So as you'll see here, what we ended up with was plenty of storage for a lot of the hand power tools. Uh, most of the consumables that go along with those tools. So up here on this rack here, uh, I've got pretty much uh, sawzall blades, jigsaw blades, drill bits, uh, nails, pins, stuff like that for the finish and the, the pin nailer. So pretty much you, you name it. And I've got tons of room left on this wall right here. 
And the thing I like most, yes, it is a lot of work uh, building French cleat storage systems, but if you're indecisive like me, then there's tons of flexibility as far as moving stuff around. Uh, you saw in the video how I built this thing right here along with the uh, charging station. Uh, and I think I did one other thing in there, but really all of the other holders for all the other various tools are very simple, simple contraptions here. I mean, that were from a pile of offcuts from previous projects. You can see this is just, you know, a part of a French cleat, a little piece that I had cut and glued together right there in base. We've got configurable storage for different tools and stuff. And you know, I can shift stuff around. I might expand the charging station and whatnot, but I'm gonna go over there everything real quick. I don't want this to run too long uh, and show you how, how I actually hung some of these items on here. Um, other than drills, drivers, nailers, stuff like that, most of the other um, hangers here are pretty simple design. So point in case the jigsaw right here is just a little piece I cut out on the bandsaw. You can use a jigsaw to do that, whatever, something like that. Where scraps come in handy, little pieces, you can see for this little hand uh, kind of mini sawzall was just more scraps pin nailed together and glued together. And the only ones that were relatively complex wasn't the miter or the uh, the circular saw, but you could see I kind of what I do is I lay pieces of wood up next to the tool, kind of make a back plate, and then just kind of eyeball, cut little pieces, fit them together. You'd be surprised what you can come up with to hold different various items. So some of the things I do have on the wall here, and I'll move the camera a little bit so you can get a better idea right here. So since my router table is on the end of my table saw, I don't always have the, uh, the router fence on there. So what I did is I made a hook, which is pretty much two laminated pieces of plywood in almost a kind of a finger configuration up there. Now where the slot in the middle of it where the actual, say if it was on the table and the router bit would be, those fingers fit in there and hold it from the middle up there. And then I made another little hook to hold the, the hose coiled up for that, uh, the dust collection for it. So it's out of the way. Pretty easy to get down if I ever need to use it. Over here, we've got the Incra box joint jig. And the only thing I did for that right there is this little plate right here. I just put two laminated pieces of plywood that I had cut little kind of L's out of. And it just holds the actual miter rail on there. And down here, we've got storage for the table saw or bandsaw or whatever other tool, the miter gauge. So the Incro one right here. Similar concept right here, just a couple rails with little fingers and it just sits right on there. What I did for my table saw crosscut sled right here is on each side, there's two little, if I slide this one out here right here, what it is, it slides on the rail right here and it's a L. So there's opposing ones on each side and we use gravity. So it just slides on there and it hangs on the rails right there. So if I need to slide this thing, I can slide it that way or I can pull it out from either side. Just move one out of the way and I've got my crosscut sled for the table saw. So to wrap this up, hindsight band 2020, would I have made this shelf system up here as wide as I did? I'm not sure about that. I might've gone short, shorter so I could make it taller because I've got still more expansion space up here, all the way to the ceiling. So I could have less commonly used things, put them a little bit higher up. I don't know, I might change that, but the beauty of it is this shelf, because I have more of these dividers, I could just cut this whole thing off on one section, add an end divider to it, and no harm, no foul. And then just shift things around how I want them. So that's pretty much it in the nutshell. So hopefully that answered some questions to show uh, and show the versatility of a French cleat wall right here. Um, so I'll try to update things as time goes on to see what I add, what I can come up with. 
I'm just happy because this whole space right here that I'm standing in here used to be the closet for the bedroom that is now the expansion to the shop from the garage. So this whole room, just to kind of show, is now just a nice walkthrough of storage. And you know, I'm granted, I'm only 5'3", I'm a pretty short dude. So I can reach full arm length in here, stretching as far as I can go and barely, barely touch stuff. So there's plenty of room for bringing stuff where eventually there's gonna be a big workbench. So in and out. So hope you enjoyed. If you like what you saw and you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe, click that notification button and stand by. I've already got a couple plans to be doing some cutting board projects, including one that's really been irritating me for a while that I really wanna do. So hopefully I'll be doing those soon and getting those up there for you. But until next time, have a good one.